This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up with the link in the description will get one month of free access to thousands of courses. When Faces was announced for a re-release, I was rather in shock. There are a few projects that I've gotten to know so well over the last seven years, and this has been one of them. I couldn't tell you how many CDs I've burnt from my car with at least one song off this mixtape. It's been a strong part of my life over this last little while, and in my opinion, it's one of Mac's greatest projects, and it's only a mixtape. This tape may be different, probably confusing to many on their first listen. In 2014, Faces was more of an era, a place in time, but in a way, quite a dark hurdle. Keep in mind this was right after watching movies with the sound off, shortly after he left Rostrum Records, where he founded his own record label, Remember, dedicated to a friend who passed away. Faces was released independently before Remember signing to a distribution deal to Warner. It was a very in-between stage of his life. At the time of this recording, he was 22 years old and had already lived many lives. After Blue Slide Park and Kids, by the time Macadelic rolled around, Many didn't expect such versatility out of him. Although it wasn't the first time hearing such themes from Mac, this was different. It was darker. He brought us into the pinnacle of his addiction, exploring life and death more than he ever has before. He said it the best four years after the release, I wasn't on planet Earth when I made Faces. Nowhere close. We were introduced to Faces on February 10th of 2014, three months before the release date with Diablo produced by his own alter ego, Larry Fisherman, stunning us once again with the sample of In a Sentimental Mood by Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. The sample would foreshadow the idea of what this tape would have in store for us. The samples found in the mixtape really showed the taste that Mac had. Not only this, but also the level of production he was reaching at a mere 22 years of age. The tape itself followed on May 11th of 2014, Mother's Day of that year. My theory of this tape is that it's segregated into two acts of extrospection, life through inside to wedding, and death through funeral to San Francisco, while colors and shapes to grand finale explores introspection, understanding the inside of the mind. He highlights themes of extrospection, letting his brain spill on the paper while under the influence. Through this, he reaches the darkest parts of his mind. Throughout Faces, we get to see his perspective of these three subjects, at the darkest corner of his existence. The beginning of this mixtape starts with Inside Outside. He should have died already. I think these themes are not entirely shocking because he isn't unaware of how dangerous his habits can be. Nor can we even comprehend how many close calls he's had at this point. A concept much trickier in the midst of addiction. When I say he's speaking about life in this portion of the album, he's speaking about the entirety of it the ups and downs until the end. Looking at what he's been through and what's in store for the future, with the next track specifically being a high, highlighting how he's done it all, even without a Drake feature. In life, he's made it. In Friends, he goes through his friends, which are a massive part of his life, commonly known as the most dope family which had a show on MTV. Friends gives us a look at what life looks like in this moment of time. Angel Dust further solidifies the theme of drug abuse, specifically referring to PCP. Within this track, you can hear a high-pitched voice throughout the song. As covered in previous videos, this alter ego is named Delusional Thomas, often used to communicate the darkest crevices in his mind. His angel dust trip leads to Malibu, the aftermath of a trip. He feels guilt, is in a circle of addiction, and knows he needs to check himself into rehab before he dies. The neurotic lyrics go hand in hand with the heightened addiction throughout these tracks. His words also become more and more desensitized, further instating this with let me off at the top, in what do you do, no matter what he's chasing that high. As this is a portion that he's analyzing the entirety of his life, he concludes with it doesn't matter, a sample of everyone's favorite Bill Murray and Meatballs, who means it in the notion of not to sweat the small stuff, to do your best, to make an impact on the world, and not to worry about the outcome while coaching kids within the film. It almost seems like a mantra looping in Mac's head, like he's trying to reaffirm himself that it just doesn't matter. But with the context of this in the album, it comes out as a nihilistic kind of way. It reflects on the idea of desensitization at his lowest low, 
nothing matters at this point. When chasing a high, you'll risk every moment you've spent on Earth, because in the moment, it just doesn't matter. Max therapy is doing whatever he wants, accompanied by others. When you do the things that Mac does regularly, the feelings of synthetic happiness can become dull, even though it's truly a dream of many. But he wants to know how it feels, because he doesn't get that feeling anymore. Many of these things become the same after doing it so many times. Polo Jean samples the 1997 film Gummo, specifically the scene Rabbit Hate, where Solomon is beaten down by a bunch of other kids, criticizing every piece of him even when he's down on the ground. This can relate to the struggles of fame with both Mac and Earl. Every move that he makes is now highly publicized. The trio of happy birthday, wedding, and funeral highlights some of the biggest events to look forward to in the circle of life. Mac puts these beautiful events in the dark, drug-induced theme throughout the mixtape. His birthday is filled with transparent, soulless people that aren't there for him, but rather the event. While wedding starts with one of my favorite samples off the mixtape, a soundbite from an interview of the famous poet Charles Bukowski. He's speaking about alcoholism and life, to go and have that drink, go out and break the circle of routine, followed by Mac asking the question of the meaning of life, pursuing of love and looking past the flaws of a relationship to bring them together. He seems disgusted with himself. Knowing where he went wrong, he questions himself at the bottom of the pit to see if he's even worth it. Once again, contrasting the idea of the title, Wedding, which is supposed to be the greatest day of your life. Exploring the idea of death. Funeral brings us to the end of the circle of life. His mind is no longer with him, he's lost. The track is once again synonymous with the previous two. The lyrics contrast the title, Funeral. It's filled with acceptance, looking back on childhood and past events in his life. This track reminds me of the quote of Ben Franklin stating, most men die at 25, but just aren't buried until they're 75. Mac's mind is long gone. His mind only trails his body now. He's nothing but a shell of his former self, navigating through this world. Upon the ending of Funeral, we are presented with Diablo, the first track released from the mixtape. The artwork is definitely interesting, and it could have just been something visually appealing to Mac. But on the artistry website, it stated that this is a depiction of a ritual in Congo, where the devil is a major character that is a part of the Congo ritual. It's a representation of the fight of good against evil, which is followed by quite the opposite, Ave Maria, Latin for Hail Mary, a famous song and prayer played at both funerals and weddings. Although written for 1810's poem, The Lady of the Lake, Ave Maria found much more fame in the final segment of Disney's 1940 film, Fantasia, where the demon Chernenbog emerges from the peak of Bald Mountain to summon ghosts, vultures, demons, hags, and harpies, only to be driven away by the light of the dawn, and a procession of figures walks up the hill to witness the sunrise, orchestrated to Ave Maria. With Max Ave Maria being placed immediately after wedding, funeral, and especially Diablo, it's almost hard to not see some sort of connection within this segment. 55 helps us transition into the final third of the mixtape, where it gets really dark. The segmentation of the body and mind. We're welcomed to this part by San Francisco, which samples Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets, short film, An Organized Mind. This short film features an abstract Muppet character named Limbo, consisting of two eyes and a mouth made of string, controlled by invisible wires attached to gloves worn by two puppeteers. In the short film, Limbo dives into his own head and shows us how it's done. From the good thoughts to evil, Limbo shares the exploration of his mind. It's quite an eerie sample to use that runs parallel with the opening of the song. Yeah, welcome to the dark side of my bizarre mind. Circles and Shapes traces back to the beginning idea of perception and reality, inside and outside the mind. As San Francisco uses the idea of diving inside the mind, Colors and Shapes looks at the struggle of trying to get outside the mind, through psychedelics. This is proven through the opening sample of How to Get Out of Your Mind, The LSD Crisis, a documentary from 1966. This can further be looked at through the recently released music video, where Max Dog goes through several realms, throughout his dreams, finding himself to be in grave danger, to only be saved over and over again. 
This can relate back to Mac through his several close calls with addiction and decline with his mental health, only to just make it through and be saved each time around. This segment is further proven as Mac has always found trouble getting out of his own head, more famously known in Come Back to Earth. Further decline is shown through insomniac. Insomnia is a form of sleep deprivation due to being unable to sleep. He shows paranoia throughout the song. Uber once again brings us a fantasy-like setting of the mind wandering off in a hallucinogenic world. Through Rain, Mac uses pathetic fallacy to explore his feelings. And this pain and this pain mixed up with this rain and this rain. Apparition continues the idea of introspection. The sample is very loopy and poses the idea of being stuck and rather confused. Mac states, I've experienced every feeling except fine. He's so deep in the gutter that he forgets what it's even to feel the baseline of fine. Not even great. The entire mixtape isn't just a come down, which is why I think Thumbelina fits great. It breaks the chain of the constant come down throughout the tracks. But I believe the final two tracks fall into the narrative the greatest. We see new faces every day, but we don't see inside the mind. A face can rather be deceiving, as Max states he's the only suicidal with a smile on. Although he meets many new faces, many don't really understand him. Especially with the use of LSD, his mind can be totally different from one day to another, but the face of the public will always be the same. This is said perfectly on Earl's song, Grown Ups. Feel this cage when the acid fade, face the same but the mind has changed. Throughout faces as a whole, we get to see past just his face, diving inside his mind in the acts of extrospection and introspection. Grand finale can be seen as the send off. Max said it himself, it was the departure of the Red Room, his studio. He thought that once he left the studio, he wouldn't make it out in the real world. In case he didn't, he gave us the grand finale. The sample at the beginning is from the film Where the Buffalo Roam. Bill Murray portrays Hunter S. Thompson, who ended his own life after struggling with depression and addiction. When Max says this is it, he really means it. It serves as a reflection of everything he has covered, life, death, drugs, and being trapped inside his own mind. As stated before, his lowest low was in the sanctuary. This song is quite beautiful because he was able to move on after the Red Room to make his most successful albums of his life and change himself greatly from good AM to swimming. I strongly believe that we can use faces as a lesson for all of us. There's much more that goes behind every new face that you see. Mac helps us dive into just one of those faces, his own. Although there was much more going on behind his face, he did in fact make it past the sanctuary. His battle of addiction did not end there but he did try and succeed in the fight many times over and over. Faces was just one more time around the circle. He came out not only alive, but was able to document his journey, which helped millions of others overcome tough times as well. So thank you to Max family for re-releasing one of the greatest projects ever made. This project will go on to help many lives in the years to come. I made one of these for myself. I wanted to make one more and give it away to you guys. All you have to do is subscribe and let me know what your favorite track is off of Faces and why. The winner will be picked in a week from this release date. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time.